Hello again, I'm Blunty. September seems to be turning out to be a month full of product reviews. Now, the last couple I did aren't really my usual fare. They're kind of gadget related and stuff, and usually I review you know, movies and games and gadgets and all that sort of stuff. This time, back to gadgets. I'm taking a look at uh, a netbook, Samsung's NC10. So, let's not waste any further time with me dicking about in front of the camera and show you what I'm talking about and talk about what I'm going to be talking about. That made very little sense. Here's the netbook. Okay, to give you the quick rundown on the tech specs, we're looking at a machine that sports a 160 gigabyte hard drive, a built-in 3G wireless broadband mode, and one gigabyte of RAM, an Intel Atom N270, 1.66 gigahertz processor, a 10.2 inch widescreen, and it weighs just 1.33 kilograms. So let's get to what actually matters. What is this little bugger actually like to use? Well, let's start at one of the most useful features, the built-in 3G modem. The software it comes with is surprisingly simple and elegant. Even the most gadget-challenged grandmother can work this one out. Click the big fat-ass button and bam, you're connected to Optus's 3G data network at up to speeds of 7.2 megabits a second. That's it. That's the whole story. It's that easy. In my time with the Samsung NC10, I had no problems with connection speeds or dropout. The wireless hardware seems absolutely rock solid, and I was getting consistently high speeds. Enough to do what it is we all love best, and that is burn time watching YouTube videos. And I could do it without having to do that crap where you have to pause and wait for the video to load for a while and then play. I could just load and play. Bam! The streaming buffer would stay nicely ahead of the playhead. And to my joy, the little beastie, unlike some other netbooks I've owned or played with, has enough juice to go full screen and keep the playback smooth. A nice little surprise there. The battery life on this thing blew me away. Absolutely. I had the machine for a week while I was in Sydney recently. I used it at least twice a day for web surfing, checking my emails, my YouTube messages and comments, watching some vids, doing some research, blah, 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 blah. And I had to plug the thing in exactly one time. The battery monitor was reporting just over seven hours or so at full charge, and I was expecting that to be a rather generous estimation, as they often are. But I'll be damned if I didn't get at least that much out of it. I reckon if you kept the screen at low brightness and turned off the Wi-Fi card and all that sort of stuff, you could even squeeze out another hour or so out of it. The keyboard was, to put it simply, the best keyboard I have ever used on a computer this size. The keycaps and pitch are only slightly short of being full size, and they feel great to type on. Frankly, it was a surprise, because I've got big old man hands and I can get rather clumsy on most netbook keyboards. But this one barely slowed me down. What I didn't like, however, was the touchpad. It's too small. It is absolutely flush with the case. You can't find the edge. You can't feel it. Which means I was often swiping my finger right off the end of the thing without even knowing it. Basically, I had to keep looking down at the thing to make sure I was still on it. You do gradually adjust and get used to it. Kind of, but it's still a piece of crappy user interface design as far as I'm concerned. You should be able to use this thing without having to look where your fingers are. Kind of the point of them, but, you know, the keyboard makes up for it, I guess. The keyboard is fantastic. I keep saying that, but it really is. Go find one of these, type on it, you'll see what I mean. On the body, you've got your usual complement of input-output interfaces on the right side, a VGA port for an external monitor, a USB port, and your headphone, microphone, and line-in connections on the left the power input, a standard Ethernet jack, and two more USB ports. And of course, there's the requisite webcam built into the screen bezel, and it's actually a pretty decent camera. More than good enough for Skype video calls or a quick YouTube blog. And in the front of the machine, you've got an SD memory card reader, handy for offloading those photos and videos when you're traveling around. The whole fit and finish of the Samsung, like most Samsung products I've owned, actually, is superb. It feels and handles like a very well-built and solid piece of kit. Although the gloss black finish is, of course, a fingerprint and smudge collector like you wouldn't believe. If you're a bit obsessive-compulsive about such things, this might drive you completely and utterly insane. To wrap it all up for you, aside from the moderate misery that is the touchpad, this really is easily the best netbook I've ever had my greasy mitts on. It's nippy, it does everything you're going to need a netbook to do for you. The Optus 3G wireless broadband worked flawlessly, and it's well designed and built tough enough so you're not going to be worried about the inevitable knocks and bingles it's going to have in its life as a road warrior machine to keep you connected as you travel. Frankly, I was a little sad and disappointed when I had to actually return the review sample unit that they let me borrow. I wanted to keep it. 
For you Aussies, here's the deal on getting one. It is exclusive to Optus, and much like many phone contract deals, you can get the netbook for absolutely free, zero dollars, zip, nilch, nothing, when you sign up on either a two gigabyte or five gigabyte a month data plan. All the details are on the Optus website if you're curious. Well, that's about all the important stuff I can tell you about the Samsung NC10 netbook, exclusive to Optus, blah, 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 blah. I've been Blunty. I'll catch you next time when we're looking at another piece of Samsung wireless internet gear thingy. See this? You know what this is? This is uh, kind of exciting. So join me next time. Talk about this thing. I have to give that back as well. That's kind of disappointing. Sometimes I get to keep the stuff I review. Sometimes I don't. I like it when I get to keep them. <laughs> catch you next time.